Hello everyone, Scott Alexander here, and I am going to do a uh, basket floral today. And what is a basket floral? Well, these names are names that, unless it's something that I'm, I'm trying from somebody else, if I've never seen this specific technique used before, I'll just name it, you know, to remind myself what I did and how I did it. <clears throat> and this is back to the basics. This is the original floral that I did that got me a lot of attention over a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, I did using this little guy right here. Um, I found it in the plumbing section in Home Depot. It's a basket that goes inside of another device to catch some stuff that goes through. And actually, a friend and I both got them. And the first time I did it, I tried to pour paint this way and it was not successful at all. I was like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but my friend suggested I turn it over and try it the other way because he had done it <clears throat> and, uh, and it worked for him and I was like, well, okay, let me try that. So I did in Magic, guys, this, so the difference between this floral that I'm gonna do and the ones that I've done more recently in video is that I control the shape. This allows me to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna get paint ready uh, and I'm gonna stack the paint in um, the pouring uh, device. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me more control of the shape because I'm gonna pour into this basket and I'm gonna watch the color come out and it comes out round. Uh, and it, so even in, in the reverse dip florals, even if I try to make it round, whenever I pull, depending on the angle and depending on how I pull it and the speed and a whole bunch of factors, it, it can lose its shape, you know, and then I go back and I do a lot of shaping at the end, but this allows me, I can watch it spread out and get to wherever it's at. And I can then uh, decide to stop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a base coat on this canvas this is an eight inch square and I'm going to get it to almost the edge and then remove the basket and almost immediately I'm going to push down in the middle and draw the paint back in because I don't want it to spill over the sides. I want to keep the shape in the middle of the canvas and the result or the end result that I want, um, I guess it's, it's just a little bit bigger than the, than the palm of my hand on this canvas and knowing that as I draw paint out from the middle and it pulls it's going to draw itself in a little bit so I'm going to lose some of the uh, the size by doing that technique where I push and then I start shaping but it's what I do and it's, it's something that I'm used to so it should be no problem at all all right so I have my basket here it's ready in reserve first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base coat on here Make sure there's nothing floating around on this. All right, where are you, base coat? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> and in here, what I had is I had a uh, metallic blue, and it's the folk art metallic ice blue that I mixed with my slurry, and I put one drop of silicone in it uh, for the two ounce. Uh, paint two ounces of paint <clears throat> and I had a little bit of it left in this squeeze bottle and for the base coat I just want to get paint on there it didn't matter to me I wanted it to be dark so what I ended up doing is I had some black also and the black that I have is an apple barrel black and whenever I mixed it <clears throat> initially I put in some deco art extreme sheen pewter just so I could have a little bit of, uh, of, of shine in it. And so I, I mixed that up and I mixed it with that ice blue. So you're going to get mostly black. <clears throat> there might be some other blue that comes through. Uh, but that's just uh, because I, you know, I don't like a completely black background or, or dark background. <clears throat> I want to have something that I can control. Or some some extra interest in there. So this is a blackish blue. 
and I can already see that it's got some dimension in it, so it's got some layers, which is good. So I'm going to make sure I get my corners first, because I'm going to basically get, put the, a puddle in the middle and then tilt it. I have everything in squeeze bottles, but and that's so that I can control it. But for this, I don't want, I don't need to control it that much. And there you see the different colors coming through. It's gonna be great. <laughs> All right, let me get this going. Alright, so if you can see, I'm not sure how well it comes through on the camera. Oh, there's a whole area there that I didn't get. Fortunately, I have plenty on my hands. Let me torch this real quick. settles itself back together. <clears throat> I'm going to go over my colors real quick. Uh, I am using a uh, Master's Touch Violet. <clears throat> I am using a Deco Art Teal Metallic. I'm using Deco Art Extreme Sheen 24 Karat Gold. I am using Master's Touch uh, Phthalo Cyanine Blue. I am using, this is a Martha Stewart one, I can tell just by the Martha Stewart Pearl, and the color is Scallion. It's a light green, it's really pretty. And some of the black that I had mixed in, it's not with the blue, it's just the Mars black with pewter. And so I am going to put my basket now. We'll call that the middle. All right, so let me get my paint prepared. And for that, I need one of my little measuring cups.
And I want this floral to end up mostly gold with the peacock colors kind of thrown in there. That's why I have this mix. Uh, I like that on a dark background. Uh, so I'm going to start and end with gold. But I'm also going to throw gold in intermittently. So <clears throat> it's not going to be... Uh, well, I just want to make sure that the gold doesn't get eaten up. So I'm going to start with some gold. I'm put purple. And it won't take much paint, so the layers are going to be short. Get some teal. And put some gold again. Some blue. And light green. Gold again. I'll do one more round. It won't take all this paint, but I'll have it just in case. Okay, you see the layers there? You see how it's stacked? Now, I'm going to pour into my basket, and hopefully you're not getting just the top of my head in this. I want you to see what I'm doing. I'm just going to uh, go around until, like I said, until I get the paint to about right here, and then I'm going through it in my head so I don't have anything in my way. Move that. After that, I'll put the paint down, grab the basket. I'm going to put my hand under the basket whenever I lift because it's going to pull the paint, but it could drip back down. And I don't want that to happen. I want it all to just come back together. It usually makes a bubble in the middle. So I'll pop that and then I have my extracting tube ready so that I can press it and extract and then start shaping. What that was. <clears throat> Alright, so I have everything. I have my paint brushes ready. So I can use the back ends of that. Alright. So here we go. I'm gonna actually torch the top of this paint because I can see some bubbles forming. All right, so let's see how this works. I can actually use more paint. So while that's spreading, some more gold. Purple. Teal. Gold. Blue. Do that again.
So on my lift, we'll catch. See that bubble? Mm. All right, now, before it goes over that edge, It wanted to go over that edge more than I wanted it not to. <laughs> start doing this so it'll start coming together. 